In this second podcast, I wanted to introduce some tech talk, which I know can get insanely dreary and dry. But I think it's important to touch on the elements that go into the production of a soundtrack collection like the one I'm highlighting today, which is Monte Carlo or Bust on Quartet Records. Hello, my name is Chris Malone. I call it that instead of those daring young men in their jaunty jalopies, as that's so much harder to say and wasn't actually the title of the film during production. Monte Carlo or Bust turned 50 in 2019 and was scored by the great Ron Goodwin. Goodwin was famous for a lot of war-themed film scores like 633 Squadron, Where Eagles Dare, which is phenomenal incidentally, and The Battle of Britain, the same year as Monte Carlo or Bust. Goodwin adopts the playful, cheery and light dramatic mode he used in those magnificent men in their flying machines. Even coming up with a title song, like he did for the earlier adventure. And when we arrive miles ahead of the rest, everyone will know that our jalopy is best. They'll have to admit she's a car you can trust. So it's hard to come along the my suspension. So, to the elements. When we're dealing with a film that comes from the 1950s, 60s, 70s, and even 80s, it's often a little hit and miss regarding what material is available and what can be used. Firstly, if an original soundtrack was released contemporaneously with a film, chances are relatively good that the original album tapes or a safety duplicate still exist. But for the rest of the score, additional elements sometimes simply don't exist now. There are several reasons, however, the primary ones tend to be one or both of the following. Firstly, movements and acquisitions of studios and their materials. Think of how many times you might have moved house in the last 20 years. Think of all the things you might throw out or donate or not ever properly unbox and find a place for. For a studio, particularly in the pre-digital era, picture and sound elements take up space. And once a cut negative into positive, and mixed sound elements are kept, that's all that's ever needed to re-release the film again and again. Everything else was either discarded or put somewhere, and that somewhere may have moved a lot of times since the release of the film. So original scoring masters get lost or thrown out in this process. That's certainly no fault of current administrations who are very much on the front foot of asset protection. But think of materials for a 1950 film by 1980. It's then 30 years old. And from a purely fiscal sense, it wouldn't have made much sense to continue to warehouse rolls of scoring takes, dialogue tracks, outtakes, paperwork, and so on. Secondly, films like 
The Italian job and Monte Carlo or bust were scored in the UK and Italy, respectively. So scoring masters were shipped to other facilities for assimilation with the film. And a soundtrack album may have been prepared at the scoring studio or some other studio. And with all these movements, elements either end up scattered to the winds, so to speak, sent to the production company, sent to the dubbing facility, sent to the releasing film studio, or sent back to the scoring venue. In the case of the Italian job, it's quite likely that the scoring masters remained at Olympic Sound Studios in the UK. Prior to Olympic being closed, owners of music assets were notified to collect them. But names and addresses change, and tardy responses mean that a lot of things, sadly, were ultimately junked. There is, however, a silver lining of sorts, and it was used on both the Italian Job and Monte Carlo or Bust soundtrack releases, and that is the three separate dialogue, music, and effects tracks. Up until mm, probably some point in the mid-1980s, an element of dialogue, music and effects consisted of each of these three things represented as one individual track on 35mm full coat magnetic film. Okay, so essentially what that means is that all of the dialogue, all of the effects and all of the music are condensed to a mono mix each and then given their own separate track on an analog format, the magnetic film, for later use. What later use, you might ask? Well, mainly for creating international language versions by replacing the dialogue, and TV mixes that might substitute a different piece of music or revise relative levels. If you're still following me, you can see that even if a film was theatrically exhibited in stereo and or its music recorded in stereo, all that might remain are these three tracks of dialogue, music and effects. So in the soundtrack album business, we can use the music track for an album. Hooray! But there are limitations. Firstly, the music has all the edits made to suit the picture. So if a director or music editor decides to drop a cue or fade it out early, then that's all we've got. Secondly, the music level rides up and down because it is an exact record of what the dubbing or re-recording mixer did whilst they were making the final mix we see when watching the film. There's not so much we can do about the first issue, and this is where the likes of Tableau Music, Tribute Film Classics, and more recently, Quartet and Entrada fill the void and give us beautiful new renderings of beloved scores. The second issue we can deal with via technology and patience. We can, what we call, unpot the music track to basically manually reverse out all of the up and all of the down volume changes using a digital workstation. But unfortunately, because these materials were originally recorded in the analog domain, an increase in volume also means an increase in hiss. So there's that to deal with. 
and more often than not, any loud sound effects and sometimes quite a lot of dialogue ends up bleeding through into the music and we must either cleanse it out or edit around it. So that's how we got the complete scores to The Italian Job and Monte Carlo or Bust, not to mention a whole slew of others over the years. In those cases, we were able to present the original album and then use the mono dialogue, music and effects track to run these scores in show order. You'll find the Those Daring Young Men in Their Jaunty Jalopies soundtrack at quartetrecords.com. You'll also find it at any of the world's finest soundtrack retailers, including Screen Archives or on Amazon. Well, that's just about it for today. Thanks for listening, and I hope you'll join me next time to discuss another classic soundtrack. Bye for now.